Hello? What? What? Oh, it's you. What the hell are you doing here? You said be here at 10. Oh shit, was that today? Yeah? Okay, give me a minute. Okay, we're back. <sighs> hey everybody, it's the ACC. It's been crazy. Not only do I have dumbass staff who don't communicate, but a lot of things have changed since my last video. I have my own business and I work for another production company in Tennessee, had a production credit, yada, yada, yada. Six years ago, I filmed myself for the first time. Six years later, I'm making films. Crazy? Yeah. Am I tired? Yeah. Do I care? No! Last time I reviewed Drawn Together. I never watched Drawn Together, so I watched Drawn Together. And I liked Drawn Together. Fawn. Since everyone I knew seemed to know about Drawn Together except me, I can honestly say that I'm out of the loop on a lot of things because I'm a fucking island of a person. So I started asking people if they knew about certain shows in the same condescending tone like they like to ask me. Hey, have you ever watched No. You never watched Holy shit, where the hell have you been? Duh, I don't know. Listening to Billie Eilish? Who the hell is that? You don't know who Billie Eilish is? You been in a freaking coma or something? Fuck you. And people are asking me why I don't get out that much. Luckily, I got staff who love me. Oh, blow it out your ass, you ingrate. Anyway, it does feel good to know a little bit more than somebody else every once in a while. So let's just see if you have any fucking idea what I'm talking about, and I'll be very pleasantly surprised if you do. So here it is. Five adult cartoons not enough people have seen, and you should too. Do it! Do it! Hmm, maybe that wasn't forceful enough. I was born to be punished. Right. Born to be hurt. To be stepped on and treated like dirt. Ben, where are you going? I'm going back to bed. Ben, what about the, what about, remember we had this talk about the master plan? I knew when I was, when I was 10 years old that I wanted to be a psychiatrist. 10 years old, but when I was 20, I took work as a pimp. I had to. There was nothing out there. What squirmy outlines? Welcome to the monochromatic and monotone world of Dr. Katz, everybody, where therapy sessions are practically 15 minutes of stand-up comedy by 90s comedians. So the spider on my windshield turned the wipers on and it goes right over him. And then it dawned on me, he's in the car! For those of you who are familiar with early 2000s Adult Swim, you might have noted that the animation style is similar to that of home movies. Welp, you're right. Except this came out before home movies. Six years before, apparently. Compared to home movies, however, which is already pretty low-key, this is even more low-key. And the guy who the show is based on does pretty low-key comedy. I joke about childbirth. My wife, God bless her, was in labor for 32 hours. I was faithful to her the entire time. Thank you very much. He plays a folk-singing, single-daddy therapist where he pretty much listens to comedians vent their problems and frustrations while he pretends to care and take notes. Sounds about right. His dumpy, lazy, overgrown 24-year-old son is played by no other than... I do the dishes every day. I don't see you where, ever where doing do you the go, dishes. Where do you go to do the dishes? Because you certainly don't do them here. You know, Why Dad... You? you don't hear it? Lana! What? <laughs> now you hear it. Before H. John Benjamin was Bob Belcher, Archer, or Coach McGurk, or doing Arby's commercials, he was Ben. Bully? 
Polly? Polly, what are you... How? 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 Ben? What? Dad, do you recognize that's this? One thing, ben, to do be you recognize that's this? That's bully. That's it's bully. One thing to be yeah, that's bully. I'm sure H. John wants nothing more than to forget this scene. Aside from having a son who still plays with his stuffed bull, Dr. Cass has a secretary who is nothing but pleasant. Hey, Laura. Hi. I noticed um, you came a little late again today. I would appreciate it if you could make an effort to be here at 9 o'clock sharp. That might actually be a problem. How so? Because I usually don't get here until after that. That's Laura Silverman playing her. The older sister and better actress than Sarah Silverman. As for the patients, they're stand-up comedians. And of course, they're fucked up. I guess creator Jonathan Katz figured that since stand-up comedy is kind of like a free therapy session, what better way to torture your audience than putting them together? How has your appetite been lately? I made this rule up when I was a little kid that I would never eat on an empty stomach. So that's thrown it off. But here's where it gets kind of weird. Even though it seems absurd to have stand-up and therapy together, it's the best fucking part of this show. Because every comedian brings some of their own style to it. Probably the only direction they got was... Act crazy. And everyone had their own interpretation of crazy. Some were weird. How does my ass look? Some were hostile. I'm going to murder you. And some were... Yes, I have been dating other people now. Okay, I don't even know what that is. And others just came as themselves. I guess they figured they're already crazy, so what the hell. I suffer a little bit from lack of patience. I was in the post office the other day, I'm in mm -hmm. line, and, um, you know, I'm waiting and waiting, and I was waiting there for... Five, I, I was there like five hours and I almost left. Wow, I might be extremely patient. Everything in between is either Dr. Katz having some aimless conversation with his son, his son repeatedly trying to hit on this bitch here, and Dr. Katz with his bar buddies, Stanley and Julie. And they always seem to be weirdly enthusiastic about the most mundane things. What are you saying here? You cheated? I cheated him at the game and I won. You cheated That's your that? son at, at a board game? Yeah, can you keep it down a little bit? You cheated your son at a board game? Wait. You just saw it, you saw it, and you used it? Did I just hear you say you, you cheated? Watching this, it makes me think, Jesus Christ. Is this how people used to be like in the 90s? Just get enthusiastic and a drop of a hat about a paper cup or whatever. I like paper cups better than plastic because you can squeeze them and nothing will crack and come out. Um, yeah, yeah, that's important. Yeah, we have nothing else to talk about. Yeah, I look forward to this all day. Yeah, <laughs> we have no life. But before long, this show has a strange power of growing on you. And that's when you know one thing is true. You are truly a shitty adult at last. Because it takes a certain frame of mind to appreciate this show. Some say that the main problem of this show is that it's so damn mundane. And I can't help but agree. But surprise, buddy, that's the fucking point. The humor behind this show is satirizing the mundaneness of life. People telling stupid stories like the ones about their twins, their fat dog, their wife who loves garage sales, etc. But oddly enough, it's the whole mundaneness of our lives that makes us who we are. It's a bleak but interesting point. For those who say stand-up comedy is dead, seriously, shut the fuck up. Oh, it's just stupid stories about people going through everyday things. Anybody can do that. But what this show will make you realize is that what makes some stand-up comics successful at their craft is not what they tell, but how they tell it. They can find a way to make what's everyday and mundane actually sound interesting. Even a boring story about buying a new refrigerator. Okay, you got this refrigerator right here. This keeps all your food cold for 600. And you got this one right here. This keeps all your food cold for 800. Or going to IHOP. I just don't know who designed the roof. I, I don't know who okayed the blueprints for that, but it's a bit much, you know? It's like a cathedral, you know? Ah! Pancakes. Thanks to that, I can't walk past an IHOP without laughing my ass off. And then everybody wonders why I'm smiling. Oh hey, look at IHOP, wanna go get breakfast? <laughs> uh, are you okay? 
Pancakes. Now, Dr. Katz is the show that I turn to on my most difficult days. Usually, I just watch the therapy sessions. Some of my favorites being... My dad has expressions like, ooh, look how they get you. Look how they get you. You know, I think it's a good deal. You take mom and dad's all you can eat. Look how they get you. Ooh, they get you. They give you the soup, the salad, the bread. Don't eat the, don't eat the bread. They should have been put in jail. My parents, really. Five kids, one bathroom in this house. My mother would say, why don't you use the bathroom at school? Because I live here! I carried, I carried so big, I, and also I carried very low, Doctor, you mm -hmm. know, that was one of the problems. Melissa's feet were hanging out the last three months. I can't go to the beach, because I'm, I'm so pale. You know, I've, I'm very skinny and, and very white, and when I run, it looks like I'm fleeing and I'm escaping down the beach. I don't know who half these people are, but fuck it. I don't tell you on the bottle where not to put this stuff. I want the information from the people who make the oil not to put it in the pookie area. Whoopi, goddammit, I don't want to hear you talk about your pookie area. For those of you who want to give this one a shot, they're all over YouTube, so it's not like they're hard to find. And although it is slightly outdated, so what? As long as you can stomach Dr. Cat's folk singing, shouldn't be a problem. I was born to be punished, right? born to be hurt, to be stepped on and treated like dirt. Yeah. But my love for you, dirty girl, it won't quit. Even though I know everything you touch turns to shame on you. I girl, love right? that. The ancient pharaohs were not too bright, they say. But they made one contribution. Way, way back in the 1980s, secret government employees dug up famous skies and ladies and made them using genetic copies. Let's go over it again. A group of scientists made genetic copies of famous people, and now they're all going to high school together in the early 2000s. Isn't that one of like the best fucking premises of a show you've ever heard? Why didn't anyone think of this before? You hear about shows and movies of historical figures ending up in the present and that somehow fucks up everything, but not historical figures coming back as teenagers to a present day high school. Like, what? What? Yes, they're all here. There is Abe Lincoln, Gandhi, Joan of Arc, Cleopatra, JFK, this guy, Marilyn Monroe, Elvis. It's a freaking wax museum come to life! This is awesome! Why am I so fucking happy about this? The only thing is, they're not really Abe Lincoln, Gandhi, Joan of Arc, Cleopatra, JFK, Marilyn Monroe, and Elvis. They're just clones. And this is Clone High. And like every high school environment, the number one priority is to be cool and get laid. Oh yeah, and if you're not hot, you're basically worth nothing. Welcome to high school, skank. You'll only be here for four fucking years. So basically all our favorite historical figures are going through the same high school struggles as every teenager who had the disadvantage of going to American public high school went through. Yeah, what could possibly be harder than being married to your brother, or leading an army, or being married to this woman? Instead, these teens have to deal with the temptations of drugs and alcohol. Are you ready to say no to drugs? Keep their innocence in line. Allow me to draw you off. With my pants! And deal with assholes, which are pretty much everybody. I'm starting a teen crisis hotline, and I'm looking for volunteers. Yep, this is high school. A time to find oneself and discover how alone you'll be for the rest of your life. So these clones are pretty much like their historical counterparts. In some ways. Abe Lincoln is a tall, lanky guy who makes speeches and keeps the peace and wants Cleopatra in the worst way. Yeah, I want to date Cleopatra. She's attractive, smart, athletic, good-looking. She's hot, photogenic, she takes pride in her appearance. 
Gandhi is a short, energetic party animal with ADHD. E D B C C A D. Boop, I'm done. Do you mind? <laughs> We're taking a test. <laughs> Joan of Arc is the vigilante who makes artsy films in her spare time and wants Abe in the worst way. If I want you. You want me to what? I um, um... forgot what you're gonna say. It happens to me all the time. Well, I'm off. What? Cleopatra is the high school slut who is well respected for her dedication to community service. This year, the theme for the awareness fair is... Awareness. JFK is the macho dimwit who always sounds like he's singing off key in a Boston accent and has banged every girl in school. Ask not what your student body president can do for you. Ask what you can do to your student body president's body! Dr. Scudworth, the principal of Clone High, and his robot companion, which he probably penetrates on a regular basis. Hence his easy jealousy. He is paid to monitor these teenage clones, cause the government is looking for some way to keep his crazy ass occupied. For what is more powerful than a high school principal? Dr. Scudworth. <laughs> Sorry to disturb you, but there's growing concern among the secret board of shadowy figures that you may be completely insane. Blasphemy! And that is Clone High. And how nice of them to incorporate little details about each of these historical figures. And some cloning jokes, like for those of you who remember the early years of cloning, one of the first things they cloned was a sheep. Cause we needed more shepherd's pie or something. I'm also the first mostly human clone. This place did a little sheep DNA. Now if I could go back to the early 2000s and watch an adult cartoon on MTV while everyone else is watching Daria, I'd probably be watching this. It's different, it smartly parodies teen dramas. I guess I was just looking for what all of us are. Acceptance. Loser! <laughs> and it's unapologetically insulting when it comes to depression, ADHD, sleep disorders, blindness, homelessness, and special needs kids. It is my great pleasure, as president of the student body, to officially dedicate this impassable moat protecting us from the special ed classroom. Oh yeah, and one of India's most respected heroes is portrayed in this light. Yo! Everybody get naked! Woo! While Clone High goes as far to enrage even the most non-PC individuals... But nobody knows how lonely I truly am. <laughs> He's sad. That's hilarious. <laughs> this show pays a lot of attention to the love triangle between Abe, Cleopatra, and Joan of Arc. Yeah, cause there's not enough teen dramas about love triangles. Now, in my opinion, and you don't have to listen. If there's any moody high school girl worth rooting for, it's not Daria. Put the gun down. What's my beef about Daria? Well, she's a moody chick with problems, right? She lives with a well-off family in a suburban neighborhood, attends a decent school, has one really good friend, and is endowed with brains. And yet, she's miserable and she loves to watch her family suffer. Let's go get our picture taken with the cardboard alien. Uh, sure, honey. And then there's Joan. She lives with her foster grandpa who is blind, her best friend who she is in love with ignores her for a whore, her other best friend is, well, this guy, and at some point she becomes homeless and is forced to live with the person her true love is banging. Now, if there's anyone who should be miserable, it's Joan. And yet, she still keeps trying. She helps others, she fights for causes and people she cares about, and she doesn't close herself off to the world. Now, which one is a stronger character? Y'all suck. Welp, this show definitely crossed the line, especially with the people of India, since apparently some were so freaking outraged with the Gandhi character, MTV has made a mockery of one of our most respected heroes. That the show was cancelled after 13 fucking episodes. Jesus Christ. Damn. But whether it's your speed or not, this show existed. And the entire show can be found on YouTube now in one four hour video. 
God bless you with a multitude of vaginas, whoever uploaded it. So get on your ass and give it a watch. It's the only place where you will see dead famous people clones and Marilyn Manson singing a song about nutrition. Meat can be a tasty treat like fish or human beings. <laughs> when you eat your sweets, make sure you try to limit your servings or you'll die. Clone High, one of the few shows that accurately depicts the fake, cruel, shallow, selfish, sexist, and unsympathetic world of high school. I hate this school. Am I the only person who hasn't seen the movie Clerks? You haven't seen Clerks? Oh, fuck off, will you? Just saying. Yes, unbeknownst to me, there was this movie called Clerks, made by a dude named Kevin Smith, who reportedly sold his Star Wars collectibles for $20,000 to make this movie. $20,000. Must have been a lot of shit. Six years after the movie came out, which was apparently a hit despite the bad acting, bad camera work, bad editing, and a weird black and white color scheme that makes no fucking sense, an animated series of the same name was aired. Oh, what? No way. It's my day off. <sighs> Fine, I'll be there. Hence, this is one of the only times when I found the spinoff to be better than the original content. In fact, it freaking trounces it. Clerks the Animated Series is for anybody who has ever worked a minimum wage, dead-end job they don't give a shit about like I have. Same as it ever was. Nothing exciting ever happens in this place. Let Dante, Randall, Jay, and Silent Bob enlighten you on a way to make your mundane workday better. Not working. When a mega convenience store opens up next to the shitty convenience store you work at and you have no business, fucking enjoy it. You know, I always said this job would be great if it weren't for the customers. That quicker step is the best thing that ever happened to us. I'm starting to agree. Let them also enlighten you on a way to act like complete idiots. At least two of them. What are you doing? When Cortez reached the New World, he burned his boats to encourage his men. So? I'm sure we'll find a way out. There. The Maze of Death. What? What about that one over there? That could be anything. It's always smart to tie your food up in the trees at night, so as not to attract bears. I do give credit for Mr. Sell My Star Wars Shit for 20 grand for creating these characters, although their characters in the movie are not even remotely entertaining compared to these, despite the fact that they use all the same cast. Watching level-headed Dante and dimwit Randall constantly rib each other like normal guys who just hang out simply because they've known each other for so long is sadly one of the most accurate depictions of friendship I have ever seen. Caitlin and I went steady for most of high school. You know, I lost my virginity to her. I know that. I was there. Jay and Silent Bob are not bad either. Even though Jay has no one to really talk to, they still manage to be pretty entertaining. Let's get out of here before this guy makes you his next bride. How are you gonna manage that, genius? Oh my god, we're free! No, I meant we're free! Also, this show is chock full of random jokes, ranging from parodying TV shows and movies to rotten burritos crawling away. Some funny, and some not so funny. Just blink and you'll miss them. We're almost there. Why are we walking like this? You said the same thing about Jaws when we were kids. Because you refused to sit on the toilet! Sharks swim in water. There's water in the toilet. I rest my case. Sharks only swim in salt water. I have salt water in my toilet. However, through the course of the show, a lot of the jokes center on the fact that nobody was watching it, and nobody had any good things to say about it. I love the movie, Clerks, but I think your show sucks hard. It's in color, right? And nobody curses? That wasn't even a question. So if you thought Clone High had a short run due to some pissed off Indians, this one's run was even shorter. 12 episodes? No. 10 episodes? No. 8 episodes? Still no. Try 6 episodes. 6 
fucking episodes, and it was over and done with. Turns out more people were fans of the god-awful movie than the show, and were severely disappointed when the show was nothing like the movie. So they had to come out with Clerks 2 to appease the fans, which was slightly more watchable, but unnecessarily vulgar enough to get the okay from them. Even though the animated series wasn't well received, I'll always be among the select few who wish the show could have lasted longer. Though I do like the show Clerks a lot, my favorite animated clip is one that is not even in the actual show. It's a lost scene from the original Clerks movie that was animated and released, where Randall and Dante attend the funeral of an old female acquaintance. Jesus, I think I just saw her chest move. It's so weird. I was intimate with this girl. There's lint in her belly button. Leave it alone. Well. Good fucking riddance! It was nice not quite getting to know you. Thanks for teaching me that when you sell your Star Wars collectibles for 20 grand and you make a shitty movie with it that unexpectedly becomes a hit, if you make a show that was supposed to be your redemptive piece of work because you were finally aware of how painfully contrived that movie you sold all your Star Wars shit for 20 grand to produce was, your fans will turn on you. Fame. It fucks your life. You know that time when you just moved to the city? And you take the first apartment and you find on Craigslist with some dude you never expected? That's where my story begins. The door was unlocked! Oh my god, you still banging that demon shit? I thought someone was getting murdered in here last night. Let's just say you're a human. Not hard to imagine. Your roommate is a zombie. Your boss, who you're also screwing, is a demon. Your coworker is a wizard. You look out your window, and this is what you see. Nope, it's not Halloween. Hey, buddy, maybe a diaper here. Suck my balls. Yeah, I hear that's good luck. Congratulations, you have just entered the world of ugly Americans, where humans, zombies, demons, wizards, werewolves, vampires, and other monstrosities all coexist within the confines of anti-utopian New York City. Yes, that also means they procreate. This is Mark Lilly, and he works as a social worker at the Department of Integration, where they help immigrants to become U.S. citizens and find security and contentment. He's also a bleeding heart, an innocent but naive soul, has a fondness for eggs and his hot demon boss, and lives in constant fear of being murdered, eaten, or nibbled on. Ow! I can't believe you ate my toe! It didn't look like you were coming back! This is his roommate, Randall who became a zombie to attract a girl, but it didn't work out, so he stayed a zombie. He's your typical playboy, and is at one point so rough with his junk that it runs away. You see, your penis didn't fall off. It ran away. What? But he's a renegade filmmaker and Mark's best friend, despite the fact that he would love nothing less to eat his ass, and knows exactly what he needs to be happy. Look out, the egg cane erupting again. <laughs> Yes, Mark is a weird one. Most people only like scrambled eggs sparingly. Ugh. This is his girlfriend slash boss, Callie. She's a demon, in case you haven't noticed. She spends much of her time playing the role as the only lead chick character, naturally seducing everyone around her. Everyone, cause she's the only chick here. Yet she's head over heels for this guy, who she could disembowel in a second if she wanted to. I just want to corrupt your soul and drag you through the bowels of hell! What's wrong? However, her overbearing daddy would want nothing less to disembowel her boy toy. I can't believe you're living with this zero! I'm killing him now. <gasps> no! This is his co-worker Leonard, a quirky rebel wizard who looks like Gandalf if he was awkward and tremendously unhealthy. Never try this at home, kid. Yellow! Being 500 years old, he's a druggie and a heavy drinker cause nothing kills this fucking guy. Mark, I'll die without that wand. It's time for a little tough love. That wand is my life force! <laughs> okay, I take that back. But he's Mark's best friend and is constantly trying to test the bounds of his magic on him, sober or not. I am going to kill a man and bring him back to life. Wait for it. Wait for it. This is the big boss, Twain, 
who looks like Terry Crews if he was red. But sorry guys, he doesn't lip sync. Aww. Yeah, I know. Although he looks like he can turn someone to ash in a millisecond, this guy wouldn't even hurt a fucking ant. I'll burn this mother to the ground from the inside! <laughs> no, 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 no! He's wimpy, nervous, sensitive, and loves acting like a 16-year-old girl, probably due to his mommy issues. And ponies make him happy. I don't know if I can do this. Just think of something that makes you happy. Get out there, oh. cowboy. Ponies, 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 ponies. And because of all these attributes, he has been put in a position of power because this is New York. Callie, you have to get me out of this. These charts are all wrong. I can't read my own handwriting. I felt like I had to take a dump, but nothing came out. <clears throat> Demon up, Twain. Lieutenant Grimes, who looks like Carl Brutana Nanaluski if he was doing something important, and who somehow has a bigger role in this show than he should, but he's mainly there to be a prejudiced bigot that everyone's supposed to dislike. See that? No, you don't. Lost it in a Restilian riot. No kneecap. Why, thanks ever so much, Mr. Werewolf. My foreskin was bitten off by a creature, and I don't even know what it was! He has an irrepressible hatred against vampires, being that his wife left him for one, and has a thing for old ladies, has serious anger issues, and has many cringeworthy moments that are still... uncomfortably funny. Your romancings got me dancing like a prancing to dancing. With each episode, our characters are constantly being mauled, killed, and in some cases, undergo some serious sex changes. And every time Leonard is involved, it never ends well. You will die of old age by week's end unless you have intercourse with a man. I didn't catch that last part. You have intercourse with a man to completion. And the victim of most of this torture is usually Mark, often centering on his mortal fear of going against his manhood. I need you to help me with my testosterone injection. So where do I, uh... It works best if it's injected directly into the penis. Uh, of course it does. Whoa! Wow! But with each episode, we also learn more about Demon Society, Wizard Society, Man Bird Society... Suck my balls! Suck my balls! Suck my balls! <laughs> yes, that's their language apparently. Despite this show's unappealing title, which I'm sure doesn't sit well with many. How dare you? The amount of creativity, humor, and detail in this show, despite having only 31 episodes, is undoubtedly impressive. In fact, I'd like to think that this is where the creators of BoJack Horseman get a lot of their inspirations, especially when it comes to the celebrity parodies. Everyone is going hey to the Z as zombie mania spreads like my gonorrhea. Indeed, the news of pop sensation Lady Hoo-Ha going zombie has sent scores of her mindless fans to do the same. However, unlike BoJack, this show does not leave you feeling clinically depressed. Funny that a show about death, doom, hell, and damnation is the one that's more uplifting. Because Ugly Americans is about acceptance. This show reminds us that we're so fucked up and different that we might as well be different species. But in the end, we're all looking for the same things. And no matter who you are, a disembodied brain, an obese demon, or a tree in Central Park that can only mate once every 50 years, thank God that sex exists. In America, we're all equal, no matter how ugly. Come slither up creatures from under your stone To join New York's menagerie of species unknown Well, you better conform or we'll drag in your bones To the Department of Integration From the relaxing shores of the Moonbeam Bay to the highest heights of the Observatory, there's no city more fun or more safe. Let's just say that the reason why Moonbeam City is not a safe city is because of this guy. Dazzle Novak, Moonbeam City Police. I hope your brain's hungry. 
It's having bullets for dinner. Thanks to him, this place is nowhere near the neon paradise it appears to be. This is Moonbeam City, where everybody wears eyeliner for some reason and is pale and sparkly like Edward from Twilight. And this is Dazzle, probably the worst fucking cop of all time. Yes, that's exactly what he's always doing. Fucking. His lady boss is fed up with him to the point of going insane but doesn't have the heart to fire him because they're probably screwing. His lady cop accomplice is probably the only real cop in this city. And his rival is the second worst cop in this city. Rad Cunningham, King Dick of the Ass Forest. Yeah, let's just say Moonbeam City is screwed. Aside from teeming with crime, so much neon pink that you'd expect Jeffree Star to pop out at any moment, and cheesy but catchy techno music that you ashamedly like enough to dance badly to, And cops so useless that a dog proves to be more useful than they are? Luckily, the family mutt, Shasta, has a bone to pick with this boneheaded killer. <laughs> In the end, the dogged tenacity of this mangy bitch saved the day. We could learn a lot from Shasta. Moonbeam City is filled with characters who are, we gotta admit, are very easy on the eyes but complete fucking idiots. Now I'm just an apt deprived husk of a man with nothing to put in my holster but Skittles. Rainbow candies can't bring down a warlord. El Diablo Malo? How do you know? Are you him? No. Idiot number one, Dazzle, obviously. Being into some of the stupidest, most vapid things, he spends most of his time stroking his ego and stroking other things. With the distractions he accrues while fighting crime, whether it be mooching off a foreign singer with an unpronounceable name. Oh, you were amazing, Aishisha. I, Aish, Aishi? How do you pronounce your name? I don't know. Or making his own stupid artsy crime film. When we cut the wheel loose, you run like hell. Because it will crush you. Why is it so big? It's forced perspective. It's gonna look normal size on camera. One thing that is always for certain whenever Dazzle is on the case, nothing is going to get done. Only he will, if you know what I mean. Then there's idiot number two, Rad. A whiny, lazy, completely dense pain in the ass who wants nothing more than to upstage Dazzle in every way. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Can't see relishes in watching Dazzle fail, and Dazzle relishes in watching him make an ass of himself publicly. I lied! I tried to stop the punks, but I got scared and I ran away. I fell down an open manhole! There was so much poop in there, and I was so scared I pooped in the poop! Their boss, Pizzazz, who always looks pissed and has the power to summon a dramatic Venetian blind shadow, even though there are no Venetian blinds in sight. If you don't solve this game, what the hell are you two doing? I decided to take my non-listening time and blow dry my hair. And she has a way of administering extremely harsh punishment to her subordinates whenever they fuck up. Whenever Dazzle gets in, please send him into my office for a brief new asshole tearing. I have had it up to here with him. Then there's Chrysalis probably the only cop in Moonbeam City who actually wants to protect people. Yet dumbass Dazzle here is constantly shutting her down, calling her the idiot. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't listen to my friend. She's disrespectful and stupid. And Rad here just wants to do as little work as possible. He shoots! He scores! Stop it! You're ruining the crime scene! Yes, to Dazzle and Rad, bowling cartoons and neon hot dogs that look radioactive, are more important than solving their colleague's murder. Let's just say if it weren't for Chrysalis, who's a freaking rookie for God's sakes, this whole fucking town would be vaporized by now in a dying rainbow. In fact, most of the disasters that happen in Moonbeam City are because of Dazzle. Um. 
Even though this whole police team is filled with completely stupid sex freaks, and the criminals are actually better people without them, this cast has some very star-studded stars. I mean, really. Except Rob Lowe... life. Who hasn't been big since the 80s. Also, you gotta admit that this place is fucking gorgeous. It's set in a perpetual 80s-style laser light show. Yes, the absolute horror. But it's so pretty! <coughs> Alas, the pretty lights and the pale, glittering faces were not enough to save the show, which was bashed for being too much like its rival show, Archer. What's the story on those fish balls? Coming right out! Well, hurry it up, all right? All I've had today is like six gummy bears and some scotch. Archer. Decent show, decent characters, but it's overrated. Hey, 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 put the guns down. For some reason, I find Moonbeam City to be much more entertaining. Sterling Archer is a sex-crazed dumbass too, yes. But even someone like Dazzle would piss Archer off if they were ever on duty together. I mean, Dazzle is a freaking waste of life, but you gotta love him because he's such a freaking idiot that you enjoy watching him go through life not realizing what an idiot he is. Archer and Moonbeam City. That would be a killer crossover. You're a dick. No, you're a dick. Dick, schmick, rick, mick, schick, brick. You live with your mommy. Well, you are pink. How dare you? Want a glitter dog? No, thanks. I'll stick with grilled cheese. Hey, mom. Guess what? I finally found someone who's dumber than me. Can you make me a grilled cheese? I'm done. He's dead to me. Yes, grilled cheese or not, Moonbeam City is funnier. And it looks prettier. So sue me. Thanks to pissed off Archer fans, it only made it to 10 episodes. So more than Clerks, but less than Clone High. I hate this world. Well, there you go. Five shows that make people go, what? Never heard of it. Way more often than they should. And quite frankly, I don't know a whole lot of people who actually would appreciate them. But if you're one of those gems floating in this giant cesspool of life, seriously, give them a watch for the love of fucking God. You will not waste your time and well, it's not like they'll keep you occupied for very long, but these shows about therapy sessions, clones in high school, minimum wage lowlifes, beasts and shit, and pretty but stupid cops, at one point, they made some poor schlub's life a little more bearable, and they continue to do that for a select few, including me. And that alone deserves credit. And if we're lucky, these shows just might come back. I'm the ACC, telling you to live large, live happy, and for fuck's sake, be different from everyone else. Bye bye Magic. My love for you Girl, it won't quit. Yeah. Even though I know everything you touch turns to should have known no. better. Every I time. Sometimes it's fun when you are.